This is chapter R, section three, order of operations with fractions, problem type one. So it has us evaluate this kind of expression. So if I go through the order of operations, there's only four steps. There are no grouping mechanisms here, parentheses, brackets, square roots, absolute values, that sort of thing. Um, so we're gonna skip that step there is nothing to evaluate, no exponents, um, square roots, absolute values, things like that. Um, the next thing I need to do is multiply or divide. And so I do have a multiplication here, so I'm going to work that out. And you can just use your multiplication properties to do this. But if you're not so great at multiplying fractions, or just fractions in general, you can use your calculator for this course. There is nothing against you using the calculator to compute your fractions. Um, if on a test, you don't wanna type the whole thing in there and give me the answer, you definitely wanna make sure you at least acknowledge what you've done first so that I know you understand the order of operations. So I could, if I didn't know how to multiply, I could type this in there exactly like that. Now what I like about this calculator is that as long as the mode is math print, I'm going to quit out of here, it will let you type this in so that it looks exactly like what it does on your paper. Now notice I did not type in the minus sign because I brought the minus sign down. So I was only typing in the rest of the problem that I did not bring down. And then it gave me 5 over 24. Now the only thing left here to do is to do the subtraction, and again, that can be done in the calculator. So 5, 6, then I'm going to hit the right arrow to get to the side, hit minus, and then type 5 fraction 24. Now I know that in order for me to add or subtract fractions, I would have to get a common denominator, which would means I would have to write equivalent fractions, and then once I had equivalent fractions, I could add or subtract the numerators. Nice thing about the calculator though is it does do all of that for you and it even reduces the answer. So the final reduced answer is 5 eighths here. If you wanted to see it done by hand, I would have to multiply this fraction by 4 and 4 so that I could get the denominator 24 for the first fraction and that would match the 24 at the bottom of the second fraction and then if I subtracted the numerators I would get 15 over 24 and then I would have to notice that 3 can be divided into both of those numbers resulting in 5 over 8. So it is possible to do it purely by hand but again it requires you to remember your rules for fractions. So if you don't remember your rules for fractions or you just don't want to be bothered with it it is perfectly okay to do these kinds of computations in your calculator. Um, throughout this entire course, if you're using this TI-30XS, there is nothing that you can type in here that you would not be able to do on a test. Okay. Now, if you're using a graphing calculator, which you should not be using, that's a little bit more dangerous because the graphing calculator does a whole lot more than what you're allowed to do in a calculator. So many things you have to show me how you graph. You're gonna have to show me how you solve an equation. And a graphing calculator can do all of those things. And that's not what you're being tested on. You're not being tested on how well you can use this device. You're being tested on, did you learn the techniques that were taught on how to um, do these problems, okay? So make sure that if you're going to be using an, any other kind of calculator that um, you're not doing things in that calculator that are not allowed, okay? And anything that you can do in this calculator is completely allowed, which is why I prefer for students to have this one because then they know there's nothing they could possibly do in there that wouldn't be okay. So next problem here, I'm gonna go through our order of operations. So there is a grouping mechanism and I do have to do that and I can do the fraction part in my calculator. It's not against the rules to do that. I get 17 over 36. It does save you some time sometimes as well, especially like on a test, right? 
and then the last thing to do is multiply. Now since this was the last response in my calculator, I'm going to go ahead and just hit times 6 over 7 and it's going to take that and multiply it by 6 over 7 and the result is 17 over 42 and that this cannot be reduced. If it could have been reduced, the calculator would have done it already. Okay, and it actually did reduce it because if you multiply 17 by 6, you don't get 17. And if you multiply 36 by 7, you don't get 42. So they've already reduced actually by 6, which is why you ended up with 17 over 42.